Hey guys, this is Valen here with Valen Games. Um, and we're going to be talking today about resource management in early game, which is where pretty much everyone but the beta players are at right now. Um, resource management, as you know, um, is going to always be important in games. Um, and things that seem like they may be abundant at the beginning turn out to be much more limited as you get to higher levels. Um, and so it's always important to know what we're getting ourselves into and to keep a close eye on those resources. Um, I'm also going to touch base towards the end with you about the um, purchase packs and what is and is not worth it. Um, but I'm going to keep that towards the end um, and address the stuff that's going to be relevant to every player first. Um, so with that in mind, we're going to start by looking at the basic types of currency in the game. Um, as you can see right here, we've got food. That is the version of stamina in this game. That's what you need to use to run a fair portion of the types of battles here, including all of the campaign missions, ranging missions, weirwood missions, etc. Um, if you don't have that food, you're not going to be making much progress. Um, as you can see, it has a maximum limit of 120 on there. Now, you can go above that if you purchase packs or pick up, say, the daily free pack, things like that. Um, however, once you get past 120, it's not going to auto-regenerate, so you're technically losing energy at that point. So whenever you can, you want to keep it below that 120 number um, so that that food can regenerate um, and you're always maximizing the amount that you have. Um, then we've got the green side energy. You can purchase, I think, six of these at a time for, what, what is it, 50 silver. Um, but in early games so far, at least, it's not worth it. 50 is more than enough, um, even as you unlock ranging and things like that. Um, this may change as we get farther and farther into the map. But um, for now, it's more than enough. And primarily what it's used for are battles that allow you to use legendary heroes. Um, those are the ones that you see in the hearth with that green dot in the upper right-hand corner of their picture. Um, as you hopefully know by now, those guys can't be used in the regular campaign, but they can be used in pretty much any other area of the game. Um, but you will be required to use that green side energy whenever you use them unless it's for a special challenge or event um, or in the hero arena. Now, then we've got these copper pennies. These copper pennies are used pretty much everywhere um, where you want to do upgrades. Um, you know, you, you pay copper pennies anytime you upgrade gear with your other resources. You pay copper pennies anytime you upgrade traits, tactic cards. Um, etc. Um, anytime you use your experience tomes, all of those cost copper pennies. So far, I've only run out of them once, and they quickly regenerated. I've never had to purchase any, um, if that's even an option. Um, so, at least for early game, they don't. They seem to be pretty abundant and not a major source of concern most of the time. Uh, I suspect that may change down the line, but for now, uh, go ahead and use them when and where you need to. Uh, silver stags. Silver stags are probably one of the most valuable currencies in the game. They're your go-to for buying special things from the shop, um, kind of the equivalent of what you might consider gems in many other games. Um, so, so they're fantastic. Right now, you can see I've got a whole ton of them, almost 18,000. Um, but that is something I expect to change as we continue to progress through the game, so I'm trying to be strategic in how I spend them. Um, as you can see, a lot of them have come from accomplishing achievements, um, but those are eventually going to run out. You do get a, a couple hundred a day from the daily quests, um, so that's nice, uh, but, but really you don't get a ton from there. So I think particularly if you want to be a free-to-play player, um, you're going to want to use those sparingly even now. There are a few areas where you really where those do get you good value, which I'll go into in a little bit. Um, but you don't want to go hog wild with them unless you want to start spending money on the game. Um, how can you purchase silver stags, do you ask? Well, that's where these gold dragons come in. Gold dragons aren't used to purchase anything directly, at least at this point. Gold dragons are used to be converted into silver um, stags at a ratio of 1 to 2. So in other words, for every gold dragon you have, 
it is valued at two silver stags. And what will happen is if you run out of silver stags, it will ask if you want to convert those gold dragons over. Um, you can purchase more of those from the... Um, from the Trader's Bargains section under the Gold Exchange, um, which we'll talk about in a little bit. Uh, so those are the, all the basic types of currencies in the game. Now let's talk about resources. So if we scroll over to our barracks here, um, we know that it takes certain types of resources, the fur pelts, the linen, the metal and the wood to upgrade the different types of gear in the game. Um, you gather all of those resources primarily from running the campaign. You may get them as some rewards from, uh, from running other areas of the game, um, like the expeditions, but by and large, you're not going to get a huge amount from anywhere except the story area. Um, and specifically the normal level campaign, the heroic level gives you other types of resources, which we haven't unlocked the ability to use yet. I believe that will come when we eventually unlock the blacksmithing section, though I don't yet know what level that is going to be at. Um, so for now, those are your main types of, um, resources that you need to upgrade gear um, and you're going to want to use those prime at least in early game primarily on three to four of your most useful um soldiers in my case i've done it with raven tree elite champion of winter um, riverlands wayfarer and knight of the rock though at this point i'm investing far less in knight of the rock um, simply because i can't upgrade him very much and i found the shieldsman to be more useful than the fighters um, you can see i'm currently capped at silver level and so he's just getting very overpowered by the other people on my team whereas i was able to get my riverlands wayfarer up to gold one um, and therefore get him up very soon to level 50. Um, so the bottom line is those are going to constantly be running out on you and you're going to constantly have to spend the majority of your stamina on the campaign to regenerate them and continue to build your hero's health. There's nothing for it. Um, there are a couple of other areas where you can kind of purchase it on demand, like at the merchant, um, in this castle merchant area, um, or, or excuse me, the ranger supply area. Um, but as you can see, you're spending silver or a or thousands of um, copper pennies to only get a couple of resources. And to my mind, that's not worth the currency. Um, you're just better off getting it through the campaign. Um, now, that being said, one thing in this section that is absolutely worth the currency are the insignias, both the veteran and the novices, and on the rare occasion you see them, the elites. Gobble these up whenever you can get them. These are going to run out very quickly for you guys and are not in abundant supply you mainly get them through the weirwood missions um but it's range based um and they only give you one or two at a time and since you can only run those missions three times a day uh they run out quickly so spending your silver on these you never need to feel bad about it um the the badges are hit or miss, it depends. I typically purchase them only when I need them, um, when I know that I've got a um, soldier or a hero that is close to needing uh, one of those badges to upgrade something um, because they are so expensive, as you see. Now, one of the other things that I don't feel bad about spending silver on is refreshes. At least the first couple, you could see it gets more expensive exponentially as you go um, because, again, these insignias are so, so important. I typically stop once I've used the 15 silver um, refresh. It's up to you um, if you want to go past that. I might occasionally spend 30 if I'm just borderline of passing something. This Renown Shop, um, you can spend your um, Renown to get the insignias, um, which I often do, um, though as you can see it runs out pretty quickly. Uh, you get Renown again through running Weirwood missions. Um, finally, there's the Honor Shop here. Uh, this is where you spend points that you receive in the arena. You want to mainly use these on things like ability scrolls, um, the other occasional valuable resource um, for a um, 
hero that you're trying to upgrade. Uh, you don't necessarily want to go hog wild. As you can see, it takes quite a bit of honor, and though you are going to be inundated with tickets for the arena at first, and that honor is going to build up fast, you will find that after you pass the new player events, um, those tickets are going to dry up real quickly, and honor is going to be harder to come by. Um, so with that in mind, uh, you do just want to make sure that you are thinking carefully before you spend things. Um, really make sure it's stuff you need, particularly when it's going to cost you that silver. I know a couple of people who have just gone crazy um, using those refreshes in the merchant going into the point where it's costing hundreds to refresh. To my mind, that's not worth it. I really think we're going to need those more later on. So while doing that may help you in the short term, I think you're messing yourself up in the long run. Um, let's see here. For most of you just starting in the past couple of days, this won't be unlocked for roughly a week, but you see this ranging section here. Now, when we enter ranging, um, these are increasing sets of challenges. They cost both the green site energy as well as the food, um, a fair amount of food at that 20. Now, they don't get you the normal types of resources. What they get you are these um, parchments, which become useful after level 40. Um, they're basically another type of gear that can raise your hero's um, or soldier's stats. Um, excuse me, the soldier's stats. Uh, so they are great. They are powerful but they are very expensive to earn. So what is the right amount? Are you better off spending your stamina, your food on ranging, or are you better spending them on, cam on the campaign? That's one of the big questions we're facing now, and here's my answer. Um, to me, you want to kind of split the difference, but weight it towards the story side. Now, I suspect, again, that this may change as we get into the later part of the game, um, but for now, here in early game, you get much more bang for your buck um, upgrading that gear um, than you do upgrading those cards. Um, uh, uh, the scrolls, rather. Um, now, as you will see, that gear does get exponentially more expensive to upgrade. Um, just comparing my level 52 here to my level 1. Um, and that but, and, and so that's one of the reasons why I suspect it may change in the long run as that gear gets up to ridiculously high levels, and I have not yet found a cap on it. Um, I suspect that those scrolls are going to start hitting a bit harder, especially because they adjust by percentage um, the stats, um, whereas the gear gives you flat rate adjustments. Um, I suspect those scrolls in the long run will be good, so you definitely still want to pursue them. Right now, I'm spending about 100 to 140 uh, food per day on the ranging and using everything else um, towards the campaign. And I do purchase my food each day. Um, it allows you to purchase up to five times. You can see I've already done it once. It starts off at 50, then you get two at 100, and then two at 150 silver. Again, this is one thing I never feel bad about spending silver on because it is key to progressing. Um, so doing it that way, I get to um, continue to progress in the Daenerys challenge, which is the current legendary events challenge. Um, I've kind of calculated it out to that amount for myself, uh, based on how many ranging events with Daenerys I still need to do before the event ends in order to maximize rewards from that. So if I can remember where to find it, uh, you will see that right now um, you get rewards for doing up to, I believe it's... 80 ranging missions or 50 ranging, yeah, 50 ranging missions um, with Daenerys. Um, I'm currently at 16. I've calculated it out since the event ends in nine days that, you know, running anywhere between five to eight missions, depending on how much I'm able to 
spend my time on it that day is going to get me there before the end. It's also going to get me a fair amount of scrolls, um, um, but still allow me to continue to push up those soldiers' gear um, and experience nice and quickly. Um, so that's basically it for resources at this point in the game. Um, again, I fully expect this to change as we hit the higher levels, start unlocking other areas, see the exponential growth in terms of expense of upgrades. Um, but at least for the first couple of weeks of the game, this is what it's looking like. Uh, you will see... Um, also, in order to continue to support you and get you extra resources that they do offer um, in the Trader Bargains, ways where you can buy resources directly. Now, you see this thing called the Best Value Bundle, which for some reason always has that red dot there no matter how many times I look at it. It drives me absolutely insane. Um, you can see we've got these rather expensive packs, and despite the name Best Value, they are absolutely not Best Value. Typically what you're getting in these are um, abil are tactic cards, hero shards, um, and things like that. You may occasionally get some experience scrolls and um, bronze coins, but if you look at the prices and what you're getting for these, remember, once you get past basically a two-star, it takes several hundred shards to open up the next level of star. So for instance, this $49 pack for Jon Snow, that's not even going to get you to the third star if he's already at two. It will get him to two stars if he's already at one, but that just seems like a ridiculous thing to ask. Um, and those cards that come with him, based on the range, you may very well get a whole bunch of one and two star um, tactic cards for that, which again, just is not worth it. Um, same thing with the ability scrolls there. Um, once you upgrade a ability to level two or three, you start really needing a whole ton of those scrolls in order to go to the next level. And those um, five scrolls are really the most valuable thing you're going to find in this pack. Um, and they're really just not going to do much for you, considering that you're paying $100 for that pack. So it's simply not worth it. Um, the daily shipment, even this, I would say no. I won't lie. At, in my first couple of days, I bought one or two. I haven't done it since then. Um, those three um, carved glyphs that you see, the chances of you getting much from those are pretty slim. And that 200 food is just going to go away super fast. So unless you have a ton of money to blow and really just don't mind the poor value here, I don't advise it. Weekly shipments, unfortunately, same thing. You get a couple of carved glyphs and, you know, these resource box, which typically give you, you know, you open them 10 times, 20 times, 50 times, depending on how many you get. Um, I've purchased one or two of these. I've regretted it. Um, the resources you get are very few from those boxes. And again, those carved glyphs just aren't worth much. I'm not buying any of those again unless they increase the bang for buck. Um... Same thing with that monthly supply, you're going to see it's very similar. Really, the only thing I would ever consider buying, though at this point I don't see the value in it, um, is these gold coins, because again, those silver stags are so valuable elsewhere. You can use them, um, you know, in getting more energy and getting more food and getting more um, insignias and so forth. So I think if you're going to spend your money, this is your area to do it, just like buying gems in other games. Um, but for now, I think the game is pretty free to play friendly. Um, hopefully that won't change. Um, but, uh, you know, we'll see. I know that they've got to make money somehow. Um, that being said, one of the things that bugs me about these packs is you see you don't get increased value for buying higher denominations. In most games, you know, if you buy some, you know, a $10 pack, you're going to get something like 10% more resources or 20% more resources than the $1 or $5 packs and so forth. And this one, the ratio stays the same throughout. I'm not sure why they do that. It seems stupid to me, but hey, it's their game. Um, so that's pretty much it, guys, for early game resource management. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me, comment on my channel, etc. Um, I do hope you subscribe and like my videos and share my videos. Um, if you feel that they're helpful, if you subscribe to my channel, you're going to get a notification every time I put something out, which is relatively often at this time. Um, 
that's pretty much it for today, guys. I'll release more of these resource management videos as we get to later and later stages of the game and I start seeing significant differences. Have a good one, guys. Be safe, and we'll see you next time.